Bet you didn't know I was a chef. Welcome to the canine section of this DVD. I think the best way to explain to you how a narcotic detector dog works is by bringing you into my kitchen. Come on. The first thing I want you to understand about how a narcotic detector dog is trained is it is very simple to train a narcotic detector dog. The hard part is finding the right dog to train. Uh, we could look at possibly 100 dogs and maybe one out of the 100 qualifies for a narcotic detector dog. We look for a dog that has an incredible ball drive. All of you have seen this dog. Everybody hates this type of dog because when you go to the backyard they jump up on you, they tear things up, and they want to chase their ball over and over and they're just psycho about their ball. That's the type of dog we want to start with. Then the officer simply scents the ball or the toy with marijuana and the dog begins to believe his toy that he has this crazy drive to get smells like marijuana. See this pot of stew? Well humans, we see carrots, corn, potatoes, gravy. We see all these substances, but we only smell one odor, stew. A dog is just the opposite. He can't see very well. He sees in shades of gray and black, and he cannot see 3D. He sees flat. So his eyesight is not good, but his nose is excellent. When a canine smells this stew, he smells corn, carrots, potatoes, gravy. So he can separate odors just like you and I separate the ingredients by sight. Knowing this principle that a dog can separate odors like humans see, you should be able to draw the conclusion that masking substances do not work. So to answer the age-old question, do coffee grounds mask the odor of marijuana? Absolutely not. I've had my dog alert on bricks of marijuana that were wrapped in cellophane, then layers of coffee ground, grounds, then mustard, then mustard, <laughs> there we go. Vanilla extract is common, bounty fabric softeners and pepper. If we place cannabis in there, remember the stew analogy? The canine can go, oh mustard, oh coffee, oh vanilla, oh bounty fabric softeners. Ah, oh, the marijuana, and give an indication. So these substances do not work when it comes to trying to fool a canine. Oftentimes, people trying to mask the odor of marijuana use petroleum products, gasoline, things of that nature, or some kind of strong cayenne pepper, because a dog's nose is very sensitive, and when he comes across these items, his instant reaction is to jerk back. But that doesn't work either because we're trained as narcotic handlers to watch this type of reaction and when the dog makes it, it makes us suspicious. Okay, the question is often asked, how did the canine smell through the gas tank, through the gasoline, through the PVC pipes floating around in the gas tank and, the, and indicated on the marijuana inside the PVC pipe. I'm going to explain that to you. The dog cannot smell through anything, but odors permeate. And the example I would use when I was teaching law enforcement principles of K9, I would get a Ziploc bag and I'd either get marijuana or tuna fish or sardines. And I would place them in the bag just like that and Ziploc it. I would pass this bag around to the entire class and tell the, ask them to smell it. You cannot smell the sardines at this moment. At the end of the class, I would pass the same bag around and a couple hours later, the sardines could be smelled, which brings me to this point. Everything is porous, including plastic. Under a microscope, there are microscopic pores. So the marijuana seeps through the PVC pipes, through the gasoline, through the metal gas tank, and there's an odor or scent cone on the outside of the gas tank for the dog to pass through, and then the dog goes, oh, gas tank. 
Oh, gasoline. Oh, PVC. Oh, marijuana. So dogs cannot smell through anything. Odors permeate out. Now the rate at which odors permeate is different with every container marijuana can be placed in. If I do not contaminate the outside of this Folgers cup with marijuana dust and it's completely clean and I drop the marijuana inside the coffee and place the lid on top, the dog will not alert on this item at that moment because the odor hasn't had time to permeate. Now how long that takes? I don't know. It's different with every item. It might be an hour. It might be five hours. So it's important to remember if you're going to travel with a few joints going down the highway and you're going to place it in a container place it in a non-contaminated container right before you leave and then the odor does not have time to permeate to develop a scent cone on the outside for the dog to alert. When a bag of marijuana is touched, microscopic dust is transferred to your hand. Whatever you touch after that, you're transferring this microscopic dust and the dog can and will alert. It was very common for my canine to alert on the door handle of the vehicle. So if you're handling marijuana at your house, or if you've hidden marijuana in your car and you have that dust and you touch your door handle, that canine will alert and then the officer has probable cause to search. So keep your hands clean because a canine drug dog also knows his handler's scent. And oftentimes if the handler hid his own marijuana, the drug dog would actually be alerting on the handler's scent instead of the marijuana. So we always handled marijuana with latex gloves. Let's talk about hiding marijuana in food. Remember what you've been taught? The dog can smell, oh, hamburger patties. Ah, marijuana. But he can't communicate that to the handler. Hey, I'm smelling hamburger patties and hey, I'm smelling marijuana also. So hiding marijuana in food is a good idea because usually when the dog reacts to it, the handler just thinks the dog is being interested in food. We've picked the dog that has this psychotype drive to find his ball. That's a prey drive. I found it almost impossible to get my narcotic detector dog to search for his ball when there was some other type of prey in the same area. For instance, a cat in the car, even if we removed the cat, the dog could still smell the cat all over the car and he was concentrating on where's the cat, where's the cat, not where's the ball. I would also notice it was impossible to get my canine to search for marijuana in vehicles if we were pulled over near a roadkill. That's a wild animal or a domestic animal dead in the highway. I would have the driver move the vehicle ahead at least two miles so the dog could get that other animal or that other prey out of his mind where he could concentrate on searching for marijuana. So these deer scents and fox urines that uh, hunters use, it's a good idea to spray your tires with that. It's a good idea to carry a cat in your car if you're going to have a couple of marijuana cigarettes. This confuses the dog where his drive is channeled to chasing these things instead of looking for the marijuana. Let's talk about narcotic detector dogs false alerting. Remember, the canine thinks he's finding a toy that he's psycho about. He will do anything to get to his toy. Unscrupulous narcotic detector dog handlers have learned this and they can, through voice commands, cause their canine to false alert. The type of commands that are often used are, Shh, get it, get it. Find it, find it. Good puppy. Because those are the same words we use when we're bringing the scratch drive out in our narcotic detector dog, meaning the dog has smelled an odor. We want him to indicate that to the narcotic detector dog handler by scratching. 
So to bring that scratch drive out, we encourage them, just get it, get it, get it, get it, good boy, good boy, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And once they scratch hard enough, we throw them their toy like it popped out of nowhere. So the unscrupulous police officer can use this when you've refused consent to search and he's walked the dog on the outside of your vehicle and you've made sure nothing's contaminated and the marijuana has not been in there long enough to permeate and he does not get an alert, he will often use that trick. Just get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And the dog will raise up and start scratching. In the following footage, I'm going to show you a documented trained narcotic detector dog false alerting. Notice this Labrador hunting for the substance. Good. Show me. Show me. Good boy. Show me. That's called a false positive. There are no substances there at all, and the canine's indicating. It's clear and plain to see there are no narcotics there. Now watch, she'll continue getting the dog to alert, talking the dog into alerting. Remember this, it is not the dog's fault. It is not the dog actually lying. It's the narcotic detector dog handler that's causing the dog to lie.